Praise the Lord, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sister Shanice. If you are new here, I am super excited for this video. We are going to be doing a few different things, but this morning I started off with some chores. Of course, the kitchen, because that is the most loved place in my house. And so that's what I did this morning was just started on the kitchen, got the kitchen cleaned up so that I could have a clean space to work for all of the projects that we are going to be getting into. If you have been here for a while, you know that um, one of our favorite things to do is to open the back door and let the nice sunshine in and the nice breeze, especially for these warmer days that we've been having. I am so excited. The spring is here and the garden is getting ready to be revamped because I do have some seedlings that need to go out. I've already put some of my tomatoes out and I have a couple more that will be going out. In the coming days they are just not big enough yet and I don't want to stress them out too much by putting them out early so we're just gonna wait a little bit and then we'll put them out when it is time for a while you do know that I like to cook from scratch now I am not gonna say every single thing that I cook is from scratch but that is the goal to be a completely from scratch household and for the most part we do not eat many prepackaged foods except for like maybe snacks and stuff like that however today we are going to be making some things to get ready for the week coming up um, I do like to have things on hand especially for breakfast when my my kids come off of a break and so right now they are on their last day of their spring break and so they will be going back to school on monday which i know they're probably not excited for but i do want to be prepared so i'll be doing some prep just to get ready for that in this video kitchen that doesn't always get done like it should is definitely wiping down the walls and so that's what you see me here doing is wiping the walls down just from different splatters whether it be from like soap stains or from different things that may have been sat on the counter and opened. I know my kids had splashed some Nutella on the wall and so it got all nasty and then even wiping down the light switch because there was really weird stuff around it like maybe peanut butter or something and so I went ahead and wiped that off. I do let my dishes air dry. And so when I change the towel out, I make sure I disinfect the, ta the countertop before I put the new towel down. And so the wall looks so much better now that it's clean. spend time cleaning out the refrigerator while I was cleaning up. Um, I had so many canning jars that I was like, where are all of them at? And they were in the refrigerator, which is not uncommon. And so we were able to get those out, dump them because I was going to need them for later. And also the top of my stove, the hood part, it gets so dusty. And so sometimes it gets like all caked down. And so I did take the time to disinfect it and wipe it down so that it looks nice and shiny and clean. And then a few weeks ago, uh, I'll say, no, not a few weeks, maybe a couple months back, um, we had a fire. And so, I mean, nobody was hurt or anything like that. But the back of the stove on the wall got really, um, like, soot and just really nasty. And so I had wiped it down, but I noticed, like, it didn't come all off. And so I did take the time to take my little sign down and scrub it really good. So all of it didn't come off, but I will be tending to it a little bit more often just to get it all nice and clean. Thank you. 
there were some parts of the wall that did not come off and those were mostly like grease um, splatters that I do have to get some I had some stuff to actually get that off I have to find it like a degreaser um, I have to find it and I'll be using that on it letting it sit for a little bit and then coming back to it and wiping it down and that should help to get the majority of that off but y'all when I tell you that wall was so clean after I was done wiping it down like you can see just from the video how much cleaner it looks like the fact that it was a whole different color and I didn't even realize that it hadn't come all off when I did it the first time So I do include my children in the housework. They have a forever chore, which is their living room. My daughter was skating around this morning. I do let her use her skates in the house. But this, the living room is their forever chore. And so normally I don't help them to do this chore. But today I went ahead because there was a lot of things that just needed to get out of the way. They were in the way. And I just wanted to get it done. And I was kind of moving that morning and we were really just trying to stay motivated and so as I was cleaning up my kids were actually cleaning up as well in different areas of the house like their rooms. So now I'm starting um, the prep for next week. Um, I do like to light a candle sometimes when I'm in the kitchen working, especially if I don't have all of the lights on. And so this was not a new candle. I have been lighting this one because it smells so good. But um, this is the ball canning book that came out this year. And so when I can, I do try to make sure that I adhere to safe canning um, methods and recipes. And so the one that I'm going to be doing today did come from the ball book and we are going to be making a blueberry pie filling and I'm not using it to make pie though I'm actually gonna be using it to make some cream cheese danishes for breakfasts and just for snacks for the week and so that's what you'll be seeing me do here I had some frozen strawberries in the freezer that were gifted to me by my sister um, in Christ and so I needed to get them out of the freezer to make space for other things because I do have a grocery haul coming up this month and so I wanted to make sure that there was space for all of the food that will be going in there. One tip I do have for when you are canning is to make sure that you get all of your ingredients out and all of the things that you're going to need ahead of time so that you can move quickly. Um, I did have a little bit of lemon juice that was left from a previous canning se session and so I ended up using that for this recipe and so I actually do have to pick some more up and I actually have to add that to my grocery list so I don't forget to put that. And I have seen a lot of people say not to add cornstarch to your pie filling but mine did not clump up. It actually thickened it to the right consistency and y'all it was so pretty once it went into the jars and y'all will see that coming up and also I saw a lot of recipes adding um, food coloring which I did not need to do that which I wouldn't want to even if I you know had it in the house but we don't really use food coloring here so um, so this recipe actually calls for 12 cups of blueberries and so I have frozen obviously you can use fresh if that's what you choose to do but these are frozen, so I still put 12 cups of blueberries in my pot. And then this recipe also called for three cups of sugar. And so that's what we're going to use. We're going to use three cups of granulated sugar. 
and then as you see those tiny little hands they saw the blueberries come out of the freezer and so they both rushed to the kitchen my girls and started eating them out of the pot I ended up giving them a bowl of blueberries because I'm like y'all can't keep eating them out of the pot so I ended up giving them a bowl and they like they ate all of them so quick And then the recipe also called for a fourth of a cup of cornstarch and so uh, you mix the sugar and the cornstarch just together first and then you can pour it over your blueberries, mix it together, you let the mixture sit for about a half an hour. Now you're only letting your mixture sit if you are using fresh strawberries because you want to give it that time to be able to release some of the juices and so since I was using frozen strawberries and there was already juice and ice in there I did not let them sit and then it also called for a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. Once that done, and then you're gonna turn, you're gonna put your pot on the stove, and you're gonna turn it to medium low, and let that start to um, come to a slow boil. Now, if you're using fresh blueberries then it's not going to take as long for it to come to a boil after that half hour um, standing period. And so mine took a little bit longer because of them being frozen. And so after they come to a small boil, you want to make sure that you get all of your jars, your lids, and your bands cleaned. And so I did have to go to my pantry and get the my bands and lid bucket to be able to go through because they were all kind of mixed together from my kids going in there. and the box is getting dumped over and so I had to go through and match some things up. Once I matched them all up I went ahead and rinsed them and cleaned them in really really hot soapy water and I put them to the side until I was ready for my blueberries to go in them and they were starting to as you see they were starting to break down and release a lot more of the juices and the liquid from the ice that melted and so look at that consistency y'all that is exactly what you're looking for for your pie filling and look you do not need food coloring um i did not need food coloring and i was not gonna put any in there but look how pretty that is So I do not have a pressure canner. I am water bath canning them. This is what um, is safe for blueberries. You can water bath can them, and so that's what I'm going to do. And so I went ahead and turned my water on um, high to get it boiling, and my jar is coming out of the hot water. And I have my rack lifted because I have had the times where I forgot to lift it out of there, and it was burning hot, and I could not take it out. And so I went ahead and organized everything and got it ready for my blueberries to go in them. Now you want to leave a one inch headspace on your jars when you're filling them up and so I kind of eyeball it because I've done this a few times. Um, not specifically pie filling but I have done like strawberry jam, blueberry jam, and I've also done other types of jams and spaghetti sauces. And so you go ahead and fill your jars up with the one inch headspace. After your jars are filled, um, at this point I do do my debubbler because I did notice that there were some bubbles in there on the sides. Even though the mixture is pretty thick, I still wanted to make sure I got those out so I don't have any seepage when I do put them in the canner. And so I just quickly run, ran it around where I saw the bubbles at. 
Now I am using distilled white vinegar right here to wipe off the rims because I did have some spills and you want to make sure that your rims are clean so that you do have a good seal because if they are not clean, there's sticky stuff or any type of residue on them, you risk having your jars not sealing and who wants to do all that work just for the jars not to seal and have to reprocess them? And after your, your rims are clean, you're going to put your lids on and you're going to put your bands on fingertip tight. So you don't want to squeeze it tight as if you were doing regular jars. You want it just to be fingertip tight, just tight on top of your jars. And once your water um, comes to a boil inside of your canner, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to stick those jars in there on your rack. Your water and your canner should come about an inch above the jars. They need to be submerged. Now a pressure canner is going to be a little bit different because the, your jars are not going to be submerged in the water like you would with a water bath canner. And then here we are doing some cereal. So we did peanut butter bite cereal. Um, this is a recipe I did have to tweak a whole lot to make work for what I was looking for. So. I will have the recipe linked down below with my tweaks and so I used two cups of two and a half cups of all-purpose flour a cup of peanut butter a cup of honey and I didn't have any um, vanilla extract so I used almond extract however I would use vanilla if I had it because I the almond extract wasn't like super terrible but I would prefer that next time and so I went ahead and did that and then I mixed everything together there's also um, some powdered milk that I'm making for them to put with their cereal. Yes, we do powdered milk. I bake with it. They do drink it. They use it with their cereal and they've been drinking it so long they really don't notice the difference as if you were buying it from the grocery store. And so you will see me in some of my videos making milk for them and this is how they drink their milk. How many times a day do y'all wipe y'all counters off? I'm telling you, I wiped the counter off so many times today. There were like so many things on the counters. They were getting so used today. And I was like, man, as I was going through and watching the footage, I'm like, I wiped the counters a lot on this day. And so then you're going to use, um, this batch actually was uh, a half a teaspoon size, but I ended up doing them a lot tinier. Um, because once they came out, they were not as crunchy as I would have liked them to be, and it was because they were too big. And so this batch, it, it, I mean, it was fine. They were still good, but I did prefer the smaller size. And so the batches after this particular one, I did them all tinier. So then you're going to have your oven preheated to 300 degrees, and you're going to put your um, baking sheet in there. You're going to bake for about three or four minutes and do check it because if you do them tiny like I do them you don't want them to overcook or to burn because these did so as you can see some of them are a lot browner than they should have been and so I did um, adjust the temperature and the time on these and so now those um, jars were processed for 20 minutes and so now I'm taking them out of my canner. You want to make sure that you take the lid off, um, turn the, the water off, let it sit for about five or six minutes and then take the lid off, take it off away from you. Do not take it off towards you because that steam it does burn. And so they're going to go on this towel and they're going to sit for about 12 to 18 hours overnight. This is the cereal. This hot came out. It was really, really good. My kids did enjoy it. But if you have made it this far in my video, I do hope that you go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when I do upload a video. I am super excited for y'all to be here. I hope this video helped for anybody who wants to make some cereal or to can some potty filling. But my name is Sister Shanice and I am signing off.